And just a little bit about me as well. 10 years of experience with BIM, 30 plus projects, anywhere from a million to a hundred million. Um, I'm also the building division tech lead for Barnhill, looking at different technologies that helps us uh, become more efficient in the industry. Um, and then a little bit more uh, that you see down here, I'm a part of the ACE mentor program. That's for high school students uh, that are pursuing um, architecture, engineering, and construction. Uh, we help them and mentor them. Uh, guest lecture at NC State, Clemson, and ECU, and also a private pilot and part of the FAST team, the FAA, and also a remote drone pilot. So just a little bit about Barnhill. Um, we're broken up into four different components. Uh, the vertical component, which is what I work for, the commercial building side. We also have site infrastructure and transportation that works on roads um, and different developments. And we have an, a lot of the asphalt plants around the state of North Carolina. Um, we're third generation owned. Um, this is the Barnhill family down here um, at the bottom of the slide. And uh, we're still family owned after 73 years in business. Some of the key projects that I've been a part of uh, in Raleigh uh, and in the state of North Carolina is the Dillon. It's a mixed use office um, and uh, restaurants and different retail on the bottom. The bottom side of this uh, is also a historical building facade that was tied in with the new building. The next one is the Stephen Tanger uh, Center for Performing Arts. A uh, 3,000 uh, seat auditorium, the largest on the East Coast in the United States. Um, and you can see a, a, a picture of the inside at the top right. And then finally, this is a project I'm working on right now in downtown Raleigh. Uh, downtown Raleigh is going through a, a massive uh, influx of projects, uh, especially in the towers, uh, just like Charlotte did many years ago. And uh, we're, we're starting uh, 20 and 30 and 40 story towers here in the next five to 10 years. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about today in uh, general is constructability and this idea of how we use a building information model to try to go through that. And uh, this diagram does a really good job of, of showing that um, from the beginning of a napkin sketch all the way until we get into operations and using that model to be able to um, make decisions and become more efficient um, in the industry that we work in. Well, one of the things that we've done over the past uh, couple of years is we've started to look at uh, different studies of the industry. And one of the studies that we looked at was McKinsey and company. And they did a study that looked at technology um, in the construction industry and how that ecosystem works. And what you're seeing on the screen is, is a very small part of that study, but it really started to break down where we're at in the industry and, and where we're going. And what you're seeing in the study is it's broken up into different groups and colors. And you can see that uh, with the legends down at the bottom. But the main focus of this, I wanted to make a point here, is, is the more connections that you see between is the more inoperability that has been developed within the industry. I think one of the things that we've done is we've, we've got a lot of great technology that's either here or is coming in the present or in the future, but now trying to connect that is, is going to be the component that we're looking for and trying to help us. I mean, that's what you're seeing here in that study. And from that study, the five trends that we see here in the United States um, are these five. Um, higher definition of surveying and geolocation, bringing that to make better decisions in the BIM world. We've been limited for a long time, especially here, to just focusing on trying to solve the building components. But now we want to look at it more holistically and see how the general site ties into it. Uh, digital collaboration and mobility going from a paperless uh, construction world to more of a virtual and then into the field augmented world, which I think is a major component of trying to get quicker um, with our industry as, as, as it's uh, becoming more apparent that the industry is starting to increase uh, with the amount of projects that we have to do and turn over in a short amount of time. 
Uh, the Internet of Things, anything that's making intelligent asset management or decision making easier is going to be a big component. Uh, 5D and 4D uh, with um, either scheduling, tying into it or estimating is, is going to be a major component. And then finally, future proof of design and construction as we're starting to see a massive change back to more of a, a integrated project delivery or design build um, as we move into the future. And this next uh, increase in the industry, that digital construction um, or industry 4.0 is, is what we're trying to, to review. So what we did is we formed a committee um, on the building division side, and, and we're doing this at a company wide, and we're looking at the technology that we currently use. Um, and, and if we're being efficient or there's just something better out there to become better of how we do our work, uh, but also looking into the future and how it's going to impact uh, our industry. And, and that's what you're seeing here is some of the big areas um, that, we, that we'd be looking at or the industry is looking at as a whole especially here in the United States. And so what we did is, is we wanted to uh, take um, coordination to a different level. And, and Revisto was one of the products that we looked at. And you can see as part of this industry landscape, there's different insight uh, ventures that we look at. Uh, Bain Capital Ventures and CB Insights are two that I look at a lot. And there's many others that I look at as well. And they started to break down some of the different, um, you know, hardware and software in the industry and who are kind of the leaders. And when we were looking at something to become more collaborative between the design, the contractor and the subs, we, we really thought the Revista was a, grow, a good um, step in that direction. Um, you know, acknowledging that there's still a ways to go, but uh, definitely leading the industry. And so that's what we did. We took that information and we broke down all the softwares and hardwares that we use um, in the in our company and kind of took that big circle that we started with and broke those down to the things that we use uh, every single day. And that's what you're seeing here. But the focus I want to focus on is, is Revisto and, and then connections into Procore and how we tried to run a job from the uh, constructability phase and then into uh, coordination and closeout. And, you know, the definition of constructability is basically buildability. And it's that project uh, management technique that we review a construction process from beginning to end. And one of the things that we've uh, struggled with in the industry is getting all the people that you need with all the right experience in the same room but also looking at the same set of information. Um, because once you do that, uh, you have the younger generation that has that um, technology-based education and you have the, um, the older um, bringing in that experience, you really can identify obstacles um, that a project has. And not that we haven't done it uh, in the past, but it's, it's becoming much more um, important to do it with technology and try to uh, resolve some of these errors, delays, or cost overruns that we're seeing within the industry. And that's what we did. We started to put together a process um, of how much time it needed and who was gonna be involved, what technology would be a part of that. And we went from all the way from the beginning when we pursued a project, all the way until we bid the project and then in construction until it was complete. And we looked at the different timelines. So we looked at the different components, site work and structural and building envelope and interior architecture and MEP and fire protection. And we broke that down into three different components, deliver, review, and incorporate. And each of those different phases of SD, DD, CD, and bid, we go through this process of trying to comment on how we can solve these problems uh, before they become problems in the field. And so one of the things that we follow, uh, Jason J, uh, G. Smith, um, he's, his company's Principal Construction Analysis, LLC, we follow his five rules of constructability. And first and foremost is we create the project as a team and we avoid focusing only on the problems. It's easy to point out to a design team some of the challenges that they have in their design, but not just 
pointing them out, but giving them real uh, focused ideas on how to solve them. Uh, two, review the interface of the systems, because uh, typically the issue is not directly where the conflict is, but something much deeper. Three, keep the evaluation of the documents constructive. Uh, we have a, a challenge in this industry as contractors to blame everything on designers. Designers have everything to blame on us and then subs blame everybody. So it's one of those things where we're trying to stop the blame and trying to become more constructive in trying to solve these things before they become problems in the field. The fourth rule is stay focused on the important items. Sometimes we get bogged down on secondary items that don't really matter unless we solve the big items first. And then finally, take that time to complete a thorough review is something that we've pushed for, especially with ownership, that it takes time for us still to make decisions, even though that we have the technology um, that we have. And so we created a checklist. And with that checklist, we can take that into a software and the drawings. And we can start to break this down into things that are either complete, incomplete, or not applicable for the project. And then we can give remarks and comments back to the design team. So that's what I want to kind of go over at a high level. Um, some of the projects I'm going to talk about is, uh, and at different stages that we're working with Revisto um, and using Revisto to help solve some of this constructability um, and these meetings that we review with the design subs and uh, the owner. This project here is a project called Durham ID, and it was a project that we built uh, a few years back. And uh, one of the challenges that we have is that it's now technically an existing site, and but we're building a new parking deck that's going to integrate with the uh, with the old parking deck and the buildings that we built a few years ago. And one of the things that we wanted to do was work with the client um, that we had originally worked with and tried to figure out how we were going to connect this new um, parking deck while it's an occupied parking deck and an occupied building. And that's one of the things that we use Revis to, to do a design review, to see what the, uh, the, the conflicts may be and started to solve some of those, those challenges. We also started to help us plan um, when we go to do this in the coming year to make this connection to the old deck. The second project is at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And they're building a new school of business addition onto the old school of business. So taking from what we did for the parking deck at Durham ID, this took it to a different level in constructability because we had to not only connect the new addition to, uh, to, a, to a parking deck that's existing, but we also have to connect that with the existing roads, with two new bridges, and then a new terrace that connects into the old McCall building that you see on the right hand side. So a really complex project uh, with a lot of logistics and, and uh, complexity to it. And we're able to review this um, in, a, in a collaborative environment uh, between the design team, some of the consultants and subcontractors to try to plan this job effectively and give comment back to help this project move forward. Another project is uh, the 203 project or 203 Greensboro um, that we're building in uh, Carborough. And this is a really tricky project due to the fact that it's surrounded on all four sides with either residential business or NCDOT road. And one of the things that we really wanted to focus on in this project uh, was the site logistics component of it and trying to work through the different bodies of the city and the town um, and, and local government and also uh, the NCDOT with uh, transportation and trying to make sure that as we were going through the process of planning this, that everybody understood how the project was gonna be built. The other thing that we looked at as well is we had some rock challenges up in Carborough Chapel Hill area. And we noticed that throughout the design that some of the utilities were going to be into that rock. And one of the challenges that I've, I've talked about just now is that we're surrounded on all four sides. So there's very little wriggle, uh, wiggle room 
um, to work with any sort of blasting. So we really worked with the design to move a lot of these utilities above that rock layer so that we didn't have as much um, rippable, uh, or excuse me, shop material versus rippable material. The other thing that you see here too in the uh, yellow um, is a is a power line that has to um, that's that's going to continue to be there. We were able to de-energize that with Duke Energy uh, for the project duration, but when the project is complete, that line will still be uh, in service and active. And so, working with Duke Energy and the design team to solve that complex problem of a, a high-end power line right next to um, a new building. And then finally is the, the tower crane. And that's one of the big challenges uh, with this job. There's no uh, place to put a trailer. There's no place to put materials. It's all just in time delivery. And with that note, we had to put a tower crane to service those deliveries. And uh, that's some of the analysis that we did to ensure the, uh, the surrounding residents and businesses of, of that radius make sure that we uh, are making them fully aware uh, during construction um, that we're going to be safe. The next project that I'll show you here is the NC Department of Health and Human Resources or Services Building. And this is a project that we're joint venturing with Balfour Beatty Construction. Um, this is a little bit different project because we're joint venturing with uh, another GC. And one of the things that we wanted to do was try to cut down on some of that collaboration, or excuse me, to increase that collaboration between the two of us so that we can make better decisions as a, a, a general GC team. And that's one of the things that we plan to do later on this year with them. So that's uh, a lot about the constructability piece. The next part I want to go into is the coordination side. And um, obviously coordination is the organization of different elements in a complex body so that they can work together effectively. And uh, one of the projects we're using that on is a 400H project I talked about at the beginning of this session. And uh, all the way from the facade to uh, you know, different logistics to how the deck um, comes together, we've used uh, Revistu to try to solve some of those challenges. Here's some of the examples, uh, one being a tower crane, being into the actual building and being part of that structure until it's uh, finally removed at the end of the job. We had to make sure that the footing and the tower was gonna be able to make, uh, make it work. Um, and this is one of the things that we used and uh, tried to use that into Revisto to help us solve uh, this challenge. Um, it's one of the biggest cranes uh, that we've had, um, and it's uh, supported um, using this building. And uh, it's also freestanding, which is one of the largest sections is freestanding, and it's the largest it can be freestanding. So that was one of the challenges that we had to work through. Some of the other things, we had to put a material hoist, and that had to tie back to the structure. Um, at the same time, we'll be putting on a lot of the glass facade that makes up this building. So a lot of coordination was put into place using Revisto and some of the uh, client to make sure that we understood how that was gonna be attached to the building. We've also used Revisto too in coordination for pore sequences. This is a um, <clears throat> post-tension system building. So there's a lot of planning involved and in trying to understand how those pore sequences are gonna be poured and the different sleeves and different um, MEP systems as they pass through these different slabs. Each of the different slabs actually has to be pre-coordinated before the, the pour occurs. So using Revisto to try to show the field and show the subs of certain sequencing um, and uh, understanding how it's gonna come together. The other component of that was looking at a floor, the ninth floor, which had large uh, girder beams that uh, had to have um, penetrations horizontally through them. And uh, that's one of the big challenges with PT is, is trying to fit some of these sleeves 
through uh, through that PT strands. And you can see that at the bottom left hand corner. And what we had to do is we, we spent a lot of time in coordination trying to move these sleeves around to service the different areas of this building, but also had to be very aware of where that uh, those sleeves were going to be to not impact uh, those uh, strands. And if anybody has ever worked with post-tension systems, you'll understand that if, if you break one of those cables after they've been pulled tight, um, it's kind of like the world's worst rubber band. It blows out and it's it's really devastating um, to the to the system. It loses strength, but also can cause a really bad safety situation for the project. And then finally, the last project that we've been uh, using Revisto on is uh, is a project called the Watt Center, and we're using this now for installed work. And uh, what you could see on the bottom right hand corner is just some of that um, that work. And uh, one of my colleagues, Lee Winstead, is on this project as a, a project uh, engineer of sorts and helping as a VD, uh, VDC or virtual construction engineer to help them uh, construct this building. And what he's doing is is tracking the progress of that ductwork as it's being installed to make sure that what we he uh, what we had coordinated is is what's being installed in the field because that's the next challenge of coordination which we feel like Revisto is helping us out a lot it, and it will continue to is to make sure that what we install in the field um, is what we coordinated um, and that's the whole point of coordination and then in the back side of that really inspecting that and making sure uh, that that process is being followed. So I hope this is where we get to, and we really believe that Revisto, including a lot of other programs, um, will be able to help us uh, because with Revisto, we can bring in drone information, as you saw, laser scan information, uh, model information from different authoring tools, but also taking that to the next level and trying to tie that in with AI and and um, you know constructability and and then facility management. We really want to see that connection going forward uh, in the industry because we believe that as an industry, that's the next generation of this is to be more connected within the products that we use, and then making a better product for an owner.